Hello, I'm Candice chambers Colbeck, and I'm going to step you through our lab this week. This week, we're going to study a simple collision. In particular, we're going to look at the relationship between the average force that's exerted on an object during the collision, the time of the collision, and what the change in momentum is for the object that has been a part of that collision. Change in momentum, another word for that is impulse. Okay, so now for one of the fun parts of this lab, um, we need to find something that you have that rolls that is of known mass. And by known mass, I'm really just saying something you can go look up. So in my garage, I found a can of tennis balls. So you'll see me use one of these in a moment. So tennis ball, known mass, we can look it up. Or uh, in my basement, I found a croquet ball, also known mass. Or you can even use objects from your kitchen, like an orange. Um, we can get an estimate. This one isn't quite as well known, but if you don't have a known thing like a volleyball or a racquetball or a golf ball, an orange will do. Um, I'm going to show you a list here. So you're going to need to possibly get creative, find something in your home that is of known mass that rolls. I will say something that's really light, like a ping pong ball, may not be the best choice. So try to find something that has a little bit of mass to it um, that we can roll. And we're gonna wanna roll it into things um, like a wall or a book or something like that. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, we don't want you rolling a bowling ball into the drywall and making a dent. If you're having difficulty finding an object for the experiment this week, please contact your lab instructor. They can help you figure something out. They can help troubleshoot and come up with some ideas for you that are well beyond the list that we provided. For this first video I'm going to show you um, that uses a croquet ball having a collision with the baseboard, I thought I'd tell you how I did it. I held my iPad very, very steady, very st as still as I could above the space where we were going to have the collision. And I had someone else roll the ball. Um, that was just easier for me. Um, if, you have a, if you have someone around that can be your ball roller or your iPad holder, um, th that definitely can be the simplest way to do this. So you just hold it as still as you can. You don't want it moving this way or even up and down. Um, for this experiment, the iPad needs to be, you don't need to stand or anything, but just hold it as stationary as you can. Okay, so I wanted to do this again, um, and I wanted to see if I could do it without somebody to help me roll the ball. Um, and it was a lot more challenging. I'll be honest with you. This took a few takes for me to get it right. Um, the video is pretty quick, so I'm going to explain it ahead of time because um, the setup was the hard part. Um, I laid my can of tennis balls down because I'm going to need something in the video that I can use to determine the scale. You'll see more about that uh, later in the video. Um, and I set the tennis ball um, on the ground near my toe. And I held the iPad um, above where I was going to have my collision and held it very still and then tapped the tennis ball with my toe.
OK, now we're going to use video physics to analyze our data. Once open, tap the plus in the upper left corner, choose existing, and pick your video from the camera roll. Now I'm going to focus on these points that were right before the collision. See those? They're fairly linear. I want to figure out which one was the last point right before the collision began. That's that one. And I want to look at this linear portion at the end. Those are the points after the collision. I want to focus on the point right after the collision. Okay, so now that I have identified those two points, I have my velocity um, and time right before collision. Those are my initials. And my velocity and time right after collision. Those are my finals. And I want to read those from the graph to the best of my ability. Um, so the way I did that is I just took a piece of mail that I'm going to recycle and laid it on my iPad and using my pencil from the point, just drew it across, um, as you'll see in this next diagram. And that's how I got a, a decent reading from the graph of my initial and final velocities and times. My initial velocity is 104 centimeters per second. My final velocity is negative 37 centimeters per second. My initial and final times are shown here. Be sure to have your mass in kilograms your speed in meters per second, 
and your time in seconds. You may need to do some conversions if you've used any units other than these. Using the equation shown in the beginning of this video, I can calculate the average force on the croquet ball. Follow the instructions given to you by your instructor regarding how they want you to submit the results of your work for this lab.